Let's see. And we are live now. All right. Uh, everybody, thank you all for joining me and Theo in our little weekly thing that we're doing. And today we've got uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Lou Temple. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate being here on your Sunday and taking up some of your uh, afternoon. And uh, it's great to be here with my good friend, Theo, of course. Absolutely. It's good to see you, man. Always. You uh, Every time I see you, it puts a smile on my face because you just look so good, always. Oh, man, yeah. I appreciate it. You uh, as well. You as well. So how is life for you? How are, how are you holding up? How are things? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's not unlike any anyone else in particular. And I'm just trying to, to stay safe, trying to stay sane. Mm -hmm. um, it occurs to me uh, today that we've been doing this a long time. It's it's kind of and for us in Southern California, we're going to continue to be doing it for a long time. I, as I refer to it as lockdown Los Angeles. Yep. Um, we're we're set up for another two to three months of lockdown. So not we're not let loose until August per se. Mm -hmm. um, all that being said, I feel like it's important to recognize this is happening. Um, if you're still in denial, I think that's probably time to put that aside. And and you know. I, I doubt anyone is obviously, but um, what are you getting done? You know, what are, uh, are, are you a student of your calendar and what are you getting done? And a lot of people would say, well, what can I do? And, and that is the question that beckons the answer. And hopefully there's, there's a lot of answers. So I'm trying to answer that. What can I do uh, a lot and every day? So I, am faithfully being a student of my calendar, which is a list of to do. And um, I try to get after it every day. And at the end of the day, I feel rather accomplished. Now, does any of that have any reference to being creative? A little, a little, at least for me, and that's enough. And yeah. so, but I do think this time is valuable, obviously for you know, greater metaphorical, spiritual, uh, philosophical ideas that ever were. And I just hope that at some point we can all show our project. You know, we can all yeah. bring the class, our show and tell, hey, what I did was I wrote this great American novel. I wrote, I learned to play the ukulele. And, um, and I've written a song that plays on the heartstrings of man uh, or, um, I have come up with a new communication device, which is telepathic and absolutely sends my brain waves to my friend, Theo. I just can't connect with my wife, which is the way I like it. <laughs> um, so those things. Uh-oh. Uh All right, maybe he'll come. He'll probably come back. As yeah, always, oh, me, Theo. Apologies. Wait, I, uh, you I broke think up a little bit. Yeah. Hello, Lou. It, it'll be back. Holly. If, if, if sometimes there, if there's a little bit of lag or slow stuff, uh, Lou, if you can hear it, I've, like I said, if something happens, just you just drop out and drop back in, and it'll bring you right back here. Okay, I, I feel like I'm okay now. Yeah, you look um, good now. Uh, yeah. What? I, so the, that's a. It was a long answer to a short question. I've been trying to stay safe. I'm really maintaining the requests of our authorities, which is to, to be masked when we're outside of the, our, our porches, when we leave our perimeter to wear a mask. Uh, I really only go out to forge to get groceries for um, uh, my wife and daughter and myself. The three of us, our little trio, we're trying to stay very safe um, and be responsible. That being said, it's beautiful weather, uh, gorgeous, sunny days. It's hard. It's hard to consider that we're in in crisis with the days being so gorgeous. So, um, yeah. we're we're trying to we're we're trying to do the best we can with it. How about you, Kevin, cool. down in my own hometown, New Orleans? How you doing? I mean, we're good over here, man. We're doing about the same. Just staying in the house. Uh, we get out. Yeah, just to just to get food and, and supplies, whatever. Uh, and 
just like you, man, just just keeping a calendar and, and start trying to stay true to it. Uh, and, and you're right, man. It's really important to just have a thing to accomplish, you know, so like mental health. Well, I've also been uh, making sure to keep seeing my therapist because anxiety, man, it, yeah. this is not a great time for like to already have had it, you know, and so keeping that together. Now, one thing I did see that you were doing is that Lonesome Dove uh, reading. So yeah. what is that about? Well, uh, and I have to thank you. Um, I, I reached out to Theo to lend his uh, his, uh, his illustrious pipes, of which he did, and he was spot on. He read it so good. I'd love to see you in that remake. Uh, actually, I'd never like to see this redone, but you definitely would have a place in it. And um, and thank you for, for that chapter. And uh, I think I've got another chapter set up for you. But essentially, when this all came down, as artists were kind of trying to fill people's voided time with presentations for free on the internet, my wife suggested uh, you should read Lonesome Dove. And it just clicked with me. It's one of my favorite novels by Larry McMurtry. Uh, it's a large book. It's a weighty book with uh, yeah. 100 plus chapters. And today I just finished chapter 56. So we're just essentially halfway done and we're out on the plains and it's really great writing and it's an incredible language, not unlike Shakespeare. So it does. And you know this, Theo, because you you read a chapter recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it doesn't just roll off the tongue until you get the rhythm and then it does. And then you go, oh, that's that's the song. And mm -hmm. that's what I love about it. And um it, you find yourself finding your rhythm and the rhythm of the characters that you speak to. So we read a chapter. I say we, friends of mine, uh, like yourself and, and others on The Walking Dead and other, not just actors, but I, people that I think would connect with it. That I've asked producers and directors to read. And I like to get a female voice uh, as often as I can because that's always a different take. And it's out on YouTube, um, you know, Luke Temple YouTube channel, just Luke Temple, Lonesome Dub. I think it's out there. And I just pump it out every day. Uh, I, I, I edit it through a, a film software, which takes the time because I put a little intro music and a little outro instrumental to give it sort of a, an ambiance or a feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I give it a, a picture, which I try to credit Mr. McMurtry as much as I can. And maybe I'll add a picture that has a sense of the scene. I don't know. How, how did you enjoy doing it, Theo? I actually really liked doing it. It was a lot of fun. So I waited till like the middle of the night. You know, it's like one in the morning or something. And and just like kind of cozy then with yeah. basically this setup. And, and just like sat back and I, I read it the first time and then just like, uh, got a feel for it, and I, I uh, used Audacity to edit out mistakes or whatever. Sure, yeah. Uh, but like, like you said, man, it just evoked an image. Like you really could see this woman just like, ha! Ah, all right, the big one, huh? All right. <laughs> it was so great because your chapter had uh, introduced a, a new character, Big Sway, Big Sway, uh, who's so interesting, you know, and uh, and. And I thought exactly that you could sort of connect with that type of person who ultimately will come to find out who he really is. But there is a sensitivity like you, you know, you're a large human and people have a, a, a preconceived idea until they really get to know you. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, this is um, this is not what maybe I expected or because it's so much more. So I, I liked how you presented Big Sway and her observation of him, which is uh, which is particularly great. So we do this every day. Uh, look, it's the part of that calendar that I study. Oh, reading Lonesome Dove, it's like what gets me up and puts me to bed. And I know once I've done that, done a presentational job, and it's not about being spot on. It's about just getting it 
out there for folks yeah. to listen. And we've had as many as a couple hundred listen when as few as three, <laughs> you know, and I'm assuming folks are tired of hearing my old voice. So, um, so I try to keep it moving and, you know, I reach out to people and some people just flat out say, I love the book, have read it, love the story. Tech technology is going to, is going to keep me from doing this, you know, oh, yeah. but you know, I'm uh, it would seem I'm drinking some cowboy coffee here, which on Sunday for me is <laughs> a, a bloody Mary. So I don't know if you felt like uh, a whiskey during the middle of the night to, to, to talk about lonesome dub, but I often do. So, um, some of those slurs are natural. <laughs> hey, we got somebody chipping in. Carol saying, uh, sending positive vibes from Mas Moscow. Uh, oh, like, man. <laughs> said the streaming services Mrs. uses to watch Walking Dead has been down the last two or three days. So don't spoil anything from season eight, episode five for him. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Uh, That's when Axel returns, by the way. So I'm. <laughs> I mean, we could rewrite the whole series actually right now. Um, yeah. I find that. Have you been doing much writing? I have been doing a lot of writing. Uh, I, I, I've written uh, I've written a couple of scripts, and I've started on a short story. And um, I, I'm really feeling uh, supported by the the effort, you know, and. Um, uh, I have written a couple of television pilots and, uh, and, and my idea is to write small. So I write, I try to write a whole story in eight pages, for instance. Wow. And, um, yeah. Uh, so I read it. I read a novel by Hemingway the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, uh, in the corner sat a pair of, of baby shoes, unused, the end. That's the world's shortest novel, and he wrote that. Uh, and so I realized that says so much if you really put your your imagination to it. And so I, um, I think we we, we it, it's natural to try and really get your point across with description and and details, but it's also great to let your reader get to that place mm -hmm. you know so uh, i i appreciate that but so you're in new orleans i'm in los angeles um scott here is uh, i'm not far from theo i'm probably about an hour and a half away i'm actually in biloxi mississippi so oh by luxy yeah i like it yeah uh, um you know we, we used to roll right by you know for me i'm we used to make jokes about by luxy about how Biloxi always took a punch in the nose with every hurricane that came down the pipe. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we definitely <laughs> got off uh, with Katrina. But uh, we would pass Biloxi on the way to, um, you know, Gulf Shores or Open Oceans. <laughs> we didn't stop in Biloxi off. You should road. have. For the beach. I just think it, it – um, um, but I've, I've enjoyed it. I did a movie out there. Um and had a really big time and it was it was great and of course great seafood which i'm oh, missing yeah. you know and and um so well, we're, kind of, we're kind of like that little hole in the hidden hole in the wall that most people don't know about until you know most people think of mississippi they think of like you know the the whole bad part about it racism and craziness but here on the coastline we're kind of uh we, we, we actually should be a state to ourselves with the casinos and the fishing popularity in the community and stuff like here. We should actually be our, our basically south of I-10, we should be our own state. Uh, the lifestyle is so much easygoing. Everything is so nice and so different. Uh, you know, actually, I said I've, I've had a few friends who, a couple of them are, are actors who I've invited here to visit and okay. they've never left. So, uh, oh, that's great. Yeah, I like, uh, the, I like the vibe. I think it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's interesting to think about fishing and being out on the water uh, during this time. And uh, because we used to talk about that with The Walking Dead, we used to say, well, isn't the water the natural place to go, would you think? And, mm -hmm. and then I think the French did that um, zombie attack in a shark or something and that dispelled everything. Um, but are the fishermen out doing it? Are they? 
Well, I think uh, so. Like the locals are the the not not the commercial fishermen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I mean, even us. You know, you go out to out there for a little while and, and go floundering or you know, pull up some stuff here and there and fish for some grouper or some uh, yeah. redfish things like that. But as far as the commercial fishing, I I don't honestly. I we we haven't been out enough so for me to personally even go out there and see. You know, normally you go down to the docks and yeah, there's the shrimp boats pulling in and you go there right. and buy all your stuff, but. Right. Uh, like I said, um, we're one of the few that actually have started up opening up stuff for like 50% capacity. But me personally, I haven't gone out. I haven't ventured out far enough to to do anything. Uh, even on my days, I, mean, I was lucky enough. I'm one of the people who actually stayed working through all this. I'm a oh, firefighter for the city of Biloxi here. Okay, great. And uh, But even then, like I said, we've kind of toned our calls down to where we 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 were basically at the point where it's if, it, if it's not life, limb, or sight, you know, we, you know, we're like, okay, well, you know, we're, we're, we'll, we'll let the ambulance take it because we go yeah. to call everything an ambulance goes to. So. Yeah, I got it. I got it. You know, it's interesting. Theo can attest to this on our, uh, having done the walking dead, we were actually metaphorically dealing with a crisis. Right. That, um, that was airborne. Um, I'm assuming we can draw some comparisons to COVID uh, and we spoke mostly on the show less about after the initial shock of what it was, the, the apocalyptic setting that the, as prisoners we found ourselves in, which for all of us, we all had a, this reaction of, of disbelief and un misunderstanding. I think there's not one of us in this world that didn't, hasn't scratched our head and said, what is going on? How did this happen? Uh, but then you bounce, you rebound your, or you pivot right away. Um, uh, hopefully to just that, to hope. And we start embracing hope. So I've been, um, uh, I've been very uh, optimistically uh, brought up and and uh, hopeful about our bounce from this uh, i've also had good experience from that and i think just in general we've as a community we've all experienced some goodwill amongst each other first of all it brought to the forefront the idea that everybody is in the same situation regardless of your socioeconomic setting we recognize that the instagram life is one thing, but the reality of life, we're paycheck to paycheck, the most of us, and everybody's hurting. And for me, and I'd like to think for everyone else, our creditors have been very kind in understanding that. Obviously, we're all in a very difficult situation. Most of us, Scott, are out of work, as you know, as you know. And I, you know, I can speak to AT and T, and they're they've been cool about like hey mr temple you know get us when you can and but you so kinda, you kind of brought it up earlier too with you know with, with the whole katrina thing you know i i found especially for the most part we you know all of us i think that's what we're realizing through a, a worldwide pandemic like this is we are all very social people you 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 crave that interaction with with people around you and like what you brought up with katrina though is you know the good that you see out of this one of the things i can tell you personally i saw was the fact of your communities coming together afterwards. And I'm sure we're going to see that. I mean, we see it even now, but you know, you would have one person who had a freezer full of meat, but you know, and one person who actually had a gas stove with no power and would invite everybody over in the neighborhood to come over and have a big barbecue and hang out. And because even through tragedy, there are good things that can come of it. And yeah, I know we're still in the middle of it, but I think throughout all this, our way of life is going to change. Uh, how how things do is going to change in, in certain ways, but I, I think that's where the quarantine part is is really holding everything back is because we see the humanity of people, but we're still we have to go through think outside the box and use formats like this to get that outside contact with other people. Right. Yeah, and that's where that's where we'll say, "Hey, look what you did! Look what you did during this time! Look what you wrote, or look what you." learn to play or look at the song you made or look at the new way we've come to tell our stories or share them or connect or um, any manner of things. Look at what we were able 
because of the pause, it gave us just enough time to reinvent electricity without cords, let's say, or chemically we've designed a new form of paint that you can put on a house and change it every six months with, um, with an app. You know, I mean, whatever. I, these are just things I've been thinking about, and and um, and hopefully everyone else has too. It should be a time of of prosperity. Like we're going to come out of this. This is a message for me today. Uh, with that, with adversity, we'll come out with prosperity. That is that is that is our truth. That that will happen, and we'll be better than we ever have been. Oh, we have somebody else. Carol, Carol over there, Russia, is saying, "Sweet Jesus on a tricycle." He didn't know that you wrote the song for El Super Bisto. He had just found out about it. Yeah, that uh, uh, that song um, is called Dick Soup. <laughs> and, uh, that is. Uh, so it's that, a love that, theme. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was uh, it was a little different when I moved to Los Angeles. All the country singers. Um, not all of them, but a fair share of them um, got on real well. And uh, one night I went over to write some songs. They were all in a hot tub together. And, um, <laughs> and so that just uh, it presented itself for um, for that uh, dick soup, you know, a sausage dress. <laughs> so uh, that's sort of the I don't know. Hopefully this is. Uh, family just saying you can you can have yeah. fun it's all right <laughs> yeah so that promoted um when i did that album for rob zombie for the devil's rejects uh he asked if we could do an album to spoof uh the audience that our characters were actually real so he put the album out before the movie came out for banjo and sullivan and i wanted to write uh an album um similar to what randy newman does very double yeah. and andre and uh, Randy Newman, a, a New Orleanian, New Orleanian uh, Theo, and um, you know, double meanings, and for it to have adult um, uh, adult connotation without any, you know, curse words, essential. Yeah. So we did a lot of that. Um, uh, Heavy D always said, uh, "Don't curse if you can, you know, try a different verse." So my granddad always said that too. If you if there's a if you can use a word that's not a curse word, you're better for it. So I wrote this whole album with that double entendre meeting, but very adult uh, um, subject matter. And that was one of them, Dick Stoop. And it, it's about the boys going out. And, um, there, there's nothing better than a good innuendo. Uh, yeah. So there's another one, and correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you write a song called While I'm Out Getting Hammered, wife, My Wife's at Home Getting Nailed? Yeah, I'm an. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at home getting hammered while she's out getting nailed. Um, yeah, a dysfunctional marriage for sure. And uh, this guy's just, you know, he's uh on the couch on disability, and his wife's out, you know, running around with her boss. Um, <laughs> and so, and they they just that's how they live in the trailer park. So it's and that's probably our most <laughs> our most famous is the banjo and Sullivan. Uh, which is really great. So, all right, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to. This, this is some stuff I've never heard before, and now I'm gonna have to go back and start looking for it. You'll like yeah. it, believe me. Yeah, it's. I, get, uh, I, I can promise you it'll be on our in our store Facebook page before the day is over with. <laughs> it's, uh, it's some good old fashioned colloquial wisdom. That's the truth. <laughs> From the moment you told me about that, uh, it stuck with me like forever. Will not forget it. You are synonymous. <laughs> it was always about, you know, when I grew up songs or pardon me, albums, it was, it was as much about albums when I was, you know, learning music as it was songs. So, um, and, and they were theme albums. They were theme albums like the gunfighter album, or the train album, you know, it was Marty Robbins or Johnny Cash or, or even an Elvis, Viva Las Vegas, or Jailhouse Rock. You know, there were the albums had themes to them. Even the Creedence Clearwater of the, of the '70s had a certain Bayou theme. The Bayou album, you know that. Um, uh, you know, the, the, 
all of them were important. So I wanted to write a theme album. And it, it occurs to me that when you're writing a theme album, you musicians, or when you write anything, uh, you can start with something as simple as a title and build it. So, you know, that good old colloquial saying, like I, I used to say, I don't give a truck. Well, that was just a metaphor for the gas crisis of the 1970s and a long haul truck driver that was experiencing gas prices he couldn't afford with, a, you know, a wife at home and a bunch of screaming kids. And, and he's getting speeding tickets and the government is screwing him, you know, so he and then I transitioned it into a convoy and I'm going to crash the gate doing 98. Let them truckers roll 10 four. I mean, or or a song like uh, I'm trying to quit, but I just quit trying, you know, and oh, yeah. uh, it's about every addiction that you have, whether it's, you know, booze or weed or, or, you know, facing uh, women or whatever that is. And so each little title of the song lent itself to the story of the song. And that's what I like about music a lot is the story of the song. I, I like stories. I'm a storyteller. I'm a story listener. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, you know growing up, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably close to about the same age I am. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like the the first music and things I ever heard was, was on a reel to reel tape player, and then we progressed later on to to having the eight track, which stuck around the house forever. So yeah, I, I listen to the same music, you know, dealing with the same thing. So so I understand wholeheartedly. Yeah, you know, it's like like you know. You would buy an album, or you are you know you actually went back when they did well, even though the resurgence of vinyl. But you you go out and you'd buy an album or whatever in the cover artwork. You kind of knew what the general theme of the entire album was going to be. Now, granted, I'm not sure back then they would have considered Dick Soup an album theme, but you know yeah. it's still the same principle. <laughs> Might have had to put that in the adult section. Um, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Claude says she got the gold mine and I got the shaft. That's it. That's exactly. Yeah. I would have entirely, you know, um, taken that saying and built um, and built a whole song around it, which, by the way, is how I like to write stories, Theo. I like to take very average, like, um, did your insurance get raised after the... Uh, Katrina, you know, when you put a claim in for FEMA, did those bastards turn around and, and, and kick up your insurance? You know, that conversation leading into Bitcoin, uh, cryogenically freezing human eggs, uh, smuggling on the black market to the Russians. I will, I will transition feed store conversation into big sociopolitical events. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I like starting and, and taking any uh, because I find that interesting, but that could just be me. Yeah, no, I find it really interesting too, mainly because uh, now that I've gotten more into writing stories, exposition, like how information is exposed has become really important because there's a good way to do it and not so great way to do it, you know? And, and, and that's an interesting way to not only give the circumstances around the story, but the like where the people are, who they are, what they're doing, their life. You can do that in one sentence, you know? Right. Yeah. You can do a lot with, with, you know, the back, the, you know, even mm -hmm. someone that doesn't respond is great. You know, like, Oh yeah. shit. What's he thinking? <laughs> and, uh, like Big's way. Big sway, perfect example. Yeah, and I'm trying to find out because I want to post a link. If, if you've got a thing, Lou, did you want to send me um, uh, so I can put a link for that? Because actually, I didn't realize you were doing it either until I saw the thing with with uh, with Theo. Um, and yeah, if you want to message it to me there on, on Facebook or whatever, so I can bring it up on here so people see it. But uh, I didn't realize you were doing it. I said, Lonesome Dubs, like one of my favorite books of all time. Grew up with my dad reading everything else. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to get it out there to everybody else because uh, I went back and watched some of the other ones. I can't believe some of the voice talent you got to to be a part of it. Yeah, I'm sending uh, this on the private chat. Did that, that come works. across the one I that I just yeah, did works. today? And there's a link right there on the YouTube, and that's uh, you know, 
we're well into Gus out on the prairie now. And, um, man, if that guy's not everybody's hero, I don't know who he is, you know? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and well, he should be. And it's, um, it's just interesting. I, I think it's interesting character development that we all either see ourselves in or would like to see ourselves in, you know, any one of these characters or typically have felt ourselves in many of these characters. Um, Theo, have you, have you done any wet? You have done, you did the whole underground series. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's kind of a Western. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That, so that was, um, uh, was that, that's reconstruction era? Uh, 1840s. So, oh, it was, so it was a little pre, it was a little pre abolition then. Mm -hmm. oh. It was right before the civil war. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I, I guess I wouldn't even call that a Western. I call that a Southern. <laughs> Southern Gothic for sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I actually haven't done, I would like to do a Western, um, like the closest I got was Django. I, uh, I was yeah. up for Django. But even that was not, you know, the West is yeah. so proud. But there's something about that that tumbleweed, you know, prairie desert feel that is hard to replicate in another story. You know, it is much a character as the characters. I think the other thing that's hard to replicate, interestingly enough, as violent as our society is violence is hard to replicate. I mean, and I don't mean picking up a gun, but I mean not having a, an argument, you know, not having a, a shout out and going, you know, and finally just, you know, pulling your piece and start. Oh, man. It's just a little bit of lag. It's all right. Okay. Yeah, it'll come back. Just okay. Just try it. We may lose. Yeah, one. there we are. There we go. All right. Uh, go. I was just, I was just saying how the violence is actually hard to replicate because life was so hard in those days, and you know that people weren't looking for comfort or softness; they were just looking for a way to deal with hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were hard. Yeah, and um, and they lived short lives, and they maybe lived the life they knew they had, which was short. And you know, we're playing for the long game today. You know. Yeah, yeah. I always say my goal is to live to be a uh, comfortable 150. You know, I still active, still got a libido, everything's working, but 150. I think you you're going to laugh but I'm I'm in full support of that and and because of this new biohacking philosophy that's mm -hmm. come about yep. where you can change your molecular structure um change your quantum structure you can change your whole hardware your hard drive and update it. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We ain't talking about changing no hardware here. We... <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, they're already <laughs> writing about they're already writing about displacing people's consciousness, which means somebody's thought of it. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for but, sure. And I heard one the other day uh, on NPR about you know we talk about pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we certainly have a lot of, uh, we've got pollution in the form of landfill and we've got pollution in the form of, of smog and air and then the ozone layer and the methane. And but now we're starting to encounter thought pollution so that the universe is starting to get crowded with consciousness, hmm. with conscious and subconscious thought to the point where it will get full and they figured out that in i don't even know what exponential number 
that we're talking about. But at some point, if you think you will be disintegrated because you'll be putting pollution into the conscious thought of the universe. Now, that is an abstract thought, is it not? That is so But I don't know. After hearing a lot of people talk, I can I can pretty much guarantee there's a lot of pollution going to, to our mainstream thought. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so, Theo, in New Orleans, uh, obviously, you experienced a real heavy uh, COVID, you know, epidemic after the, the Mardi Gras, a uh, lot of concern. Um, the whole nation was well aware. And did people like take it, take it serious, I hope? Yeah, yeah. So the three places that I'm finding uh, that took it the most serious were New Orleans, New York, and California. Right. Um, and I'm just glad that that's the case. Like, uh, I looked at a map the other day of states that are in various stages of reopening. And what scared me, which, what alarmed me, was not how many states are open, but like the states that aren't, how they're surrounded on all sides by states that are open. You know, because Louisiana locked down, uh, New York, like most of the Northeast, most most of New England is locked down. Um, California locked down, but then everywhere around them, open. You know, and so interesting, Theo, because you lived in New York, mm -hmm. uh, in the city, mm -hmm. and then you you came back home to to New Orleans, um, and. Both places, as you mentioned, had experienced really heavy, uh, tragic uh, COVID cases. Obviously, did did you feel like it was following you, or like? <laughs> I honestly feel yeah, so once again blame to you. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly feel lucky to be in New Orleans versus New York. You know, uh, yeah, for sure, because. And this is so. I still have some. I have a writing partner in New York. I have a bunch of friends in New York. I'm um, acting classes in New York, and so like I'm talking to a lot of people. And the one thing that I did not consider that will for sure be a factor now is the amount of space you have in New York, which is very little. Um, not much. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a house in New Orleans, and it's one thing to be quarantined in a house. It's another right. thing to be quarantined in a New York apartment. You know, and. Man. That, ooh, that that's a game changer right there, man. I think that's a game changer. Well, interestingly, at six foot, six foot eight, eight to quarantine you anywhere is <laughs> is an issue. Uh, but yeah, in, in a little in a little flat in the city, it would be it'd be hard to keep sanity. And then, of course, Scott, you've got uh, you've got the ocean to look out on at the least, uh, not far, I'm assuming. And um, some wide open spaces as well. And it's Mississippi. Uh, they're opening up, right? They are. But still, the one thing that concerns me the most, and this is, comes from, from my, my, my job, my normal job that I do, but also just from looking back at history. I'm a firm believer. You know, if you don't look back at history, you're doomed to repeat it. But, you know, a perfect example is the Spanish flu. And, you know, it, it came around the first time and knocked out a huge portion of the population. And then, you know, they quarantined. They kind of did the same thing we're doing now. And little too soon, they decided to open back up again and start getting things mm. back to normal. And that second wave came around and knocked out over double of the population that it did the first first go round. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I, I'm interesting. I just oh, it's it's all, <laughs> it's the part that I'm like, oh, what is he about to say? You know, <laughs> it happens. He'll he'll be back. It, I got a feeling he might drop out. So if he gets to a hold of you, oh, there he is. It was unmerciful. Oh, we, we lost you for a second there, Luke. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was just saying that I was just reading about the Spanish flu and how difficult it was. Hey, you know, interestingly, it's not a fair moniker on the Spanish flu. Um, it was just that Spain sent out the first 
distress call about a virus that they were experiencing and sent it to London and said, heads up, we've got this very, uh, you know, tragic illness that's, that's scourging our country and it, it could be heading your way. And then from there, out they called it the spanish flu out of spain it, you know well, same, same i don't actually think it, it's like call it the wuhan flu like it started off here yeah mm, right okay so those are and those things lead into so much you know they're you know not to get into politics but we really do get lost in that translation and and um but back to what you said and getting lost, Scott, it's hard to get the kind of information that you can really get your head wrapped around. You know, there's so much and we're such an analytic driven society with numbers and, and trending and, uh, you know, just the basic analytics that we'll, we'll look at numbers and take them as the gospel. But right. sure, you can make numbers look any way you want. Just ask some, some, uh, nefarious accountants our biggest villains uh and so i think it is difficult and you know when you're sitting here in a very sunny beautiful day in lockdown and you're seeing atlanta georgia in kind of movement you're starting to feel you know psychologically you're feeling a little stepchildish if that's a term anymore and um so I just, I guess, like you say, we do have to be careful. I'm not, we're, we're rooting. I'm rooting for Atlanta. I'm right. rooting for Alabama. I'm hoping that their safe practices and how they get out. I don't want any harm going out that way. And I hope that, that they're leading the way in, in precaution. Uh, but like you, I, I would be concerned. I think most people are. And Theo, you're an Atlanta guy. Theo, isn't that your... Aren't you originally from Atlanta? Sure am. So yeah. you've got a lot of family there who are probably saying, "Yeah, Theo, we're we're having a barbecue tomorrow." Uh, Actually, my family, uh, I my family is staying home still because my yeah. my mom, you know, she's getting older, and so it's already a factor. She has an autoimmune disease, so that's another factor. So she's not risking it. Uh, I told my son to just stay home, like. You know, because he was wanting to go back and work, but he just putting her at risk. So it's me, interesting. A lot of this stuff is just it's really the fact that so much about it is unknown. And to me personally, has always been I, mean, I can face any fear in the world except for the unknown. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things with this is there's still so much unknown about it. You know, there's no vaccine. There's no cure. There's no anything. And the the unknown factor for me is what makes this so, so scary and and. and makes me more anxious about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Theo, <clears throat> back to you and your work. Um, have you had many auditions in this time, like self tape things? Just starting back. Uh, I got a voice. So I do voiceover, you know, and so right. uh, I got a voiceover audition that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. Um, and so the, there's a standard casting just wants to have record of you and know who you are in this time. So I've got a couple of those. Some um, generals for sure. Yeah, yeah. I have, I've had uh, one audition that was for a series uh, that shoots in Atlanta. And I don't know when they think they're going to get going, but probably not for a long time. And then, guys, I just got offered a film that they want to go do next month, June. And I just felt a little uncomfortable based on the idea that that they would be, even though they're pro probably going to be very safe, they're just probably not up to speed with what's going to be required, being the one of the first ones out of the gate. Yeah. And it would mean that I'd have to quarantine myself with my family for all of that. Uh, time and have a distance and then I'm the one that's trying to go out and forge for them and disconnect and it just it didn't feel right yet for me and I'm not judging anyone that's going to go do that mm -hmm. but I do think on a personal opinion for what we do Theo in in the uh, the film and television world uh, my opinion is that our unions will keep us 
uh, at the yeah. very forefront of safe practices, right. um, not just Screen Actors Guild, but the Producers Union and OSHA and IATSE and Teamsters. All these unions are going to get together and put it up real significant in play safeguards. Um, have not you heard about what SAG did? Yeah, no. I, I have. Yeah. 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 And good. So, that being said, I think the first, and I've always maintained because they're lean and mean it, as, as production goes, I think the independents will be the first ones out of the gate. Like yeah. the one I just got offered because they don't have as much, they're not as big and, and they can go out and, and be a little more innovative, maybe be a little lighter weight mm -hmm. and not have the personnel. So I do think the indie run will be out there. And based on that, I think there will be more open door policy for independent product in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the indie movie that you did that nobody ever sees might actually get seen these days. Yep. Well, the Theo and I were actually talking about this a little bit earlier where, um, you know, I had somebody ask earlier uh, on a previous uh, thing we did, you know, what do, they, what do we think the future of, of movies and TVs are going to be? And, you know, in the face of all this, uh, I, I honestly, I kind of I'm hoping it goes this way just for the safety of everybody involved. But I would like to see a lot more um, like animated or CGI things where you can have the actors where they can be at home and work and still stay safe for them and their families. And you could do, you know, a movie that may have been intended to be a live action thing, but might end up turning to be a better product and keep everybody safe as an animated or CGI film or, or TV show. Yeah. Right. So the blacklist is doing that. So, yeah, yeah, blacklist. Yeah, this he's talking. Are, me. are they? They're going to animate. Mm -hmm. The rest of their season is animated. Wow! Because right. just so you know, and you do know this, animation is so labor intensive. So it most is. people, most people do that get into the animation game, directors specifically and writers with the idea this would be fun. Most of my friends who have done that, who have done really amazing, big production, all mm -hmm. say, oh, my God, animation is so mm -hmm. laborsome. It's so yeah. time consuming. These artists take forever to render drawings. You know, um, it, uh, uh, you know, one episode is a is a four year venture. But that being said, to support what you're saying, I think we'll find a new way mm -hmm. to to expedite the product, so to speak. It yeah. might, it might be 2d animation, you know, the way we right, used to right. watch it with Scooby-Doo, mm -hmm. you know, if we might, we might not be so quality control about what the animation has to be. Right. And, and it may get down to something as rudimentary as stop frame animation type thing. Um, can, can you imagine you, you as a claymation figure? I can. I think, I, I think I'd be a lot better. I think uh, I think I would be uh, a lot better. I have been approached by an independent film about bringing a green screen to my house mm. and filming me so that they could CGI. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do think that is interesting. I've heard things, Theo, as you've heard um, about writing, about building projects. Let's uh, mm. we, we might cut the guest star. We're certainly going to cut the co-star. We're certainly going to cut background. Yeah. So we'll be a little bit more like daytime TV or what used to be called soap operas, where the main cast always delivers all the information, you know, or uh, it'll probably lend itself to the old um, 70s and 80s sitcom where you have a, a you know four to five person cast and they're going to tell the story and there's no new blood put in there. Yeah. yeah, and then they will become this quarantine community. It's a little bit like we're talking with the ball players. You know, thirty guys are gonna spend a month together, live together, no one in, no one out, and these guys are safe and they can play, not for any fans, but they can just go play. And so then we get down to the idea that, like the guy Snell says the other day, well, you know, I'm not getting a paid enough, and how much is enough? You know, what? How much is enough for safety? So for me, I was like, oh, I'm going to need more money to do that if I'm going to. And then I started to realize, wait, how much isn't, you know, I'm talking mm -hmm. about my life or the livelihood of my people, I, my family that I would put on the line. What is that worth? There's I mean, not an amount of money to make that worth it. So, so we are all confronted with that. 
and not just artists, not just actors and, and um, uh, musicians or, but anyone that's going back to work is confronted, you know, what is that worth? You know, and, I'll, 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 I'll contradict you a little bit on that because, you know, we got, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn thing, but you, you've got nurses and ambulance drivers and policemen and firefighters that are doing it. And, you know, but the big thing is, though, is this is, and I can speak from experience, you know, this is something we were called upon to do. This is our job. So okay. it has nothing to do with the money. It has nothing to do with, with anything else. It just has to be that this was your calling. I think that is absolutely the truth. And it would have to be the truth for people to put themselves on the front line the way That's they right. have. Yeah. And it's like this, uh, what do you call it? It's the, uh, the um, it's the oath, you know, you take right. this oath and, yeah. and you are caretaking. And I do think that, and, uh, and I, I hate to use the word contradict. So I'm not trying to contradict. So I think if you know, I think you're right. I'm, I'm you glad want you want to be safe. You, know, you, you want to keep and like same for me. I want to keep my family, my friends, everybody else safe, but you know, and I'm not going to put myself in any danger that, that is unnecessary, but this is what the job was that we decided to do. But you do. If there's a fire and there's someone to go into an apartment complex and there's a child that has to be rescued, you'd be the first one in. And if that child had is a COVID cheddar, you would certainly be exposed or any other manner. I mean, there's, you know, we can go through, well, I said I didn't mean to kind of like press it. Um, for me, it's still a little fresh. Theo knows, but uh, that's why I have this on here now. Was we actually wow. had a a wood fire that we're helping a a a, a, a next to next to us. We're doing um, we're helping them out, and uh, I ended up getting caught in a position at the wrong place at the wrong time, and wow. ended up getting burned. But uh, Theo already knows the story. But without getting too far into it, if it weren't for my chief uh, doing what he did. I wouldn't be here right now doing this this thing with y'all. So yeah, you know, just the actions of one person putting his life on the line made sure I'm here today. And I don't know. I'm assuming you did have to go seek medical attention for that. I did. I'm actually off work right now. I'm out on workman's comp. Um, but 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 that but exposing yourself to a clinic or a hospital is also. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so I had to go into the emergency. Not only had to mm. that night had to go into the emergency room. Mm. and uh, then the very next day had to go into a wound care clinic, a burn clinic, in order to get this taken care of. So I think that's entirely, you know, that first responder, first line of service, uh, the support staff of facility, I, you know, that there's a nobility calling there that's certainly different um, than the entertainment world. I think, and uh, you know, hell, they should get more pay. You know, one of the things we do here in Los Angeles, I, I think you do it maybe in New Orleans too, Theo, is uh, at 8 p.m. every night, mm -hmm. we come out and, and applaud, cheer, bang drums, yell for um, nurses, doctors, support staff, uh, fire, uh, you know, the, the fire department, uh, the police department, everybody that's on the front line, we, we just give an acknowledge every night. That's every awesome, night, actually. Every night at 8 p.m. And it's a huge explosive sound in the city, uh, which is super cool. And, you know, just a small thanks for what what they do. Um, yeah. And it's it's uh, it's a gray area, you know. And so for us to sit there and go, oh, am I going to go do a movie when there's some fireman that's called to go into a burning building to, to help save lives? There's no comparison to that. Or, you know, yeah. a professional athlete. Am I going to go? You know, they're cutting my salary. I don't think I want to go play. We're not comparing to that because there is no comparison to that. And, um, you know, the thing about that, too, I was thinking about it because uh they recently had a UFC event, right? <laughs> yeah. And it was still in a giant stadium, but it was empty. Right. And so I think he said there was 10 people total in the, in the audience or whatever, uh, which is first and foremost weird. But then, you know, you got this event that's normally an event with people and cheering and noise and it's quiet. And yeah. the corner people are like, 
they're having the whispers, so the other people, the other side didn't hear the saying. Whereas Straight. before you had to get, and it made me think about uh, the level of protection that those those guys are getting. You know, like they're not like you're saying that the thirty guy is not exposed to anybody. You know, and, and I mean, those two fighters might have had to live with each other for thirty days in quarantine and eat with breakfast and dinner and lunch with and train with each other and then go fight each other for 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 a win it would be weird but i it would would've... love that if it was that because <laughs> they're not together they got separate camps but they had to oh my god but just the two of them and they'd like oh, yeah. sit across each other at the table every day and, like that's a reality show on its own yeah <laughs> bizarre you know and so Very. well i mean you, I... Look at, you look at the, the wwe wwf whatever the the per the the professional wrestling, whatever it is, you know, if you go back and you look at some of the stuff for the last couple of weeks, the audience is empty. Right. They're still performing, them still doing their thing, and the there's nobody in the crowd. They're playing to a crowd that does not exist. But they were so, already, they were already secluded for the most part, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. And so, is it working? I mean, are they getting the television audiences? Are we? Are uh, because look, we got to watch something, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, for me, honestly, I think I've spent more of the time now binging stuff that either I've watched before and haven't watched for a long time, or or something new. I'll give it a shot. But but as far as actually watching live TV, me personally. Or, or even like new movies coming out, it 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 hasn't interested me that much. I think more than anything during this time of what we're going through, I want to. Like I said, I'm watching older stuff. I want to relive stuff that I enjoyed rather than take a chance on something new. It it's very interesting that you say that because you have that point of reference. One of the things that we spoke about on The Walking Dead a lot when we did this, uh, as you recall, Theo is memories and the memories that we had. Mm -hmm. But there were children on the show or at least and, um, Chandler Riggs and he was making memories in that sense, in, in, in that situation. And so my daughter who's 12, her memories are being built right now in this strange time. Yeah, You know, she's not hearkening back to when she was a kid. She's a kid now and the, this is her this is her reality and it's right. so strange to me and it was so strange then to consider that Carl's reality was dealing with fear, dealing with uh, uh, protection. And what your daughter is going through now. <laughs> exactly. And as a child, I didn't have to deal with any of that. I mean, the Cold War was scary, but nothing like this, you know. Well, I mean, I, I kind of use the same thing. Uh, and this is what worries me most about the, the whole COVID thing, too, is, you know, when when we were young, you know, one of the kids in the neighborhood got the mumps or the measles. Every family in the entire neighborhood brought their kid over so they could try to get the mumps or the measles so they could just gain that immunity to us. And and like I said, I, I've tried to do my research and try to look, but that's one of the biggest things that scares me. Do I want to catch it? No. But do I like to build up antibodies to it? Yes. And, you know, that... That's the one thing that scares me because I have a, a personal experience in it. My, I have a very young little sister. My mom got married again later on in life. And growing up, she, uh, you know, when we were growing up, basically the whole rule was, you know, there could be, there could be blood showing, but no bone. There could be smoke, but no fire, no flame showing. Other than that, you don't, you're not going to the doctor. We're not calling the cops. And so, you know, basically the, you know, the medicine was, you know, rub a little dirt on it. It'll make it better. You know, but then to my sister, where my mom was in a better position, and you know, every time my little sister got an earache, you know, she was at the hospital to the point now where my little sister is allergic to most antibiotics. Mm. Mm. So, so yeah, but that, that's the one thing I'm worried about is with these new ages, with these new diseases, and everything else is, are we going to be able to build up an immunity to these things, or are we kind of shielding ourselves for something even worse in the future? Well, that's the question, you know, everybody's offering just even the idea of being quarantined in your house and cleaning and sterilizing everything and being unexposed to even basic germs, not COVID virus, but just basic flu virus, for instance, or cold virus. Um, you know, our immune systems are, are weakened 
just by nature of quarantine mm -hmm. and and how will we experience that and then um let alone COVID. and then my question is really you know i, I scratch my head and go wow why how did this not happen before i mean <laughs> i mean yes we had aids and yes we had sars and yes we had swine flu and i don't know which other oh, uh, yeah. which by the way both of those were coronaviruses yeah. yeah yeah so is this one just the biggest badass one yet i think it's more of a line just like with a few with the flu um you know they they can't cure it because it's something that mutates every time it every time it picks somebody it mutates slightly mm. um that's like when you go get the flu vaccine every year, you're being vaccinated for what they're predicting to be the common strains for that year. It doesn't mean you're not going to catch it. It doesn't mean you're vaccinated against the, the strain that ends up being that year. Right. And I really think this is a lot of with these, with these coronaviruses is it's a lot the same way. And like I said, I, I can't speak from scientific, I don't have a scientific background or anything else, but I do believe that it's similar to that, to the fact where this thing is mutating to where you can't get ahead of it quick enough yeah we're experiencing that right i mean and so right. that's what, when you speak about um the idea that um the next wave god forbid you know we're, we're we're keeping an eye on the bounce for places like atlanta and we're hoping that there isn't one and that you know um that that we can get through it without experiencing that second wave of mutation um you know, at some point, I guess we're going to develop antibodies against this one, essentially, ideally. Yeah. But are those antibodies going to be good towards the next mutation? Well, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, that's the big scary question, I suppose, you know, and, and then, um, but I'm optimistic. I say yes. And I say uh, we will get through it and, and, uh, and be better for it. The pause has been difficult, but it's been good. Uh, we've experienced each other in a new way. I think we're we're paying attention to everybody's troubles and everybody's dreams uh, like we haven't before. And I feel like um, we're better. We're better right now. I think our home lives are they're either better or worse. You know, sometimes you spend too much time with people. And, you know. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I think honestly, I think in the long run, it, it's going to make life better because uh, it's caused us to to reach out in ways that we never have before. I mean, like I, I have my yeah. real job that I own the comic shop here and I've, I've known Theo for, for quite a while, but you know, without this going on, you know, having, and then this platform coming up and people turning to this platform, I would never had a chance to talk with you and, and get to know you and, and show you to, to the people viewing. And, you know, it, it's actually offered up, like we were talking about before we got live, you know, investing in the, the newest thing, quite honestly, if, you know, if I had a lick of sense, this platform came out, you know, basically right before this whole pandemic started. And, you know, whoever invested into this platform, like Zoom and StreamYard and Restream and quite those yeah. ones, oh, are, man. are a freaking killing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Amazon is too. Walmart is. Yeah. yeah. And that's just it. That's what I mean about what have you done? What are you going to do? And hopefully there's somebody that's, that's one up this in Zoom, you know, and somewhere... Mm -hmm. There's got to be a software that's being designed and developed where w this will be the new form of entertainment. I mean, about so, the only thing they got left you, to go is be able to feel you know, the they have that doing scene. Though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. We'll uh, reach out and, and shake a hand without, without doing it. Yeah. There's got to be some 3D hologram where we're actually <laughs> in touch, you know. And um, and we will get there, and I, I, I think it will change things. You know, like for instance, Theo here, there's still commercials being shot, and they're being shot in the house with yep. families. Like yep. they're really into families. They're really yep. into because that's the idea: hunkering down. Um, what are you doing as a you know as a as a unit? Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you've got your Doritos and you're watching TV and enjoying each other. But we're just going to film you while you do this. And I'm going to tag out for one second while yeah, I read it a bit. I got to yeah. reflect this, though. You know, it's funny. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. How are you? 
How's it going? Good, good. Right. How are you? So, <laughs> well, this, this is Lou Temple. Lou. Nice. How's it going? I'm Grant. Hey, Grant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant. So, my rematch with Theo there. I guess I got to point the direction. If there it is. <laughs> He's, he's right over there. Yeah. So, but, and you know, Lou, you were saying about the commercials. Um, it's funny because, like, and, and Grant, we were talking about like the influx of new commercials being filmed from people's homes and like settings like this and Zoom and such. And it's funny because, like, yes, it's innovative and it's definitely adapting to change. But the first thing that I thought was like, man, I bet each and every one of these is non union. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no and now the the union issue will be because the union's going to prohibit us from going to work because of the safe practices and there there's just going to be a lot of productions that aren't going to be able to meet the safety quota that's being asked upon them. So they're going to be non-union and they're going to come to us and say, "Look, are you willing to, to do this non-union project?" And you're like, man, I can't. And they're like, what if we offer you a lot of money? And you're like, I can't. How about this? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's probably how it's going to go. Or we're going to be asked to, you know, to go overseas and work. And oh, uh, that's scary. Yeah, yeah, it is scary. But my next job is in August, uh, and it's in the UK, and I'm set up to go do that. I don't know if I will or I won't, but, um, you know, and, yeah. and think about things like you and I do uh, public appearances. You know, that's a whole different world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about that lately because we've been talking about it anyway. But, uh, yeah, man, that's – I was already not – doing a ton because just us focusing on work and you know making that a priority because i, I kind of slipped when i when i first started got comfortable doing it you know yeah and so, uh, and so like i, I just want to make sure it didn't happen again but now it's like and, and and think about this like at any point in the time that we started doing this and now we could have shaken a hand and ended up with concrete well, kind of crud just got dangerous, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It got real, for sure. Yeah, so that, man. That's a whole new, um, you know, uh, I can see where we'll be taking pictures where there's a, you know, transparent wall between us and the, and the guest, you know? Oh, God. Our plane, but, the, you know, we're not really, we're shielded from them or... Um, well, that's like at, at Pensacon actually. Uh, Billy Zane was there, and he he had a line taped off in front of him, so you couldn't get that close to him. And for pictures, he he would get up and all that, and he would stand next to you, but not like holding or anything. And he had this thing vapor in his face and fan blowing away from him to keep everything. And that was just at the right at the beginning of all this stuff too. That happened oh, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and that's still taking a risk. Yeah, for and sure. He, just flying there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. Well, it's a it'll be a new environment. We'll all, but again, we'll we'll get through it. We'll we'll be better somehow, some way. We'll reinvent it and overcome it, and uh, and it'll be okay. And um, there'll be those of us who won't adapt, or there'll be those of us who won't let go of old behaviors, and um, th that will be inconvenient and uncomfortable but uh we'll still get through it oh yeah hey theo what are you doing for physicality for workouts in your house oh, uh so i was already coaching boxing and kickboxing before this went down and uh -huh. i kind of built a little setup in the backyard so i got a big heavy bag okay got a double and ball i, I got uh, some stuff that i made uh right. for like reflexes and movement or whatever and then I have some clients that I do just straight calisthenics with. So I'm doing a lot of uh, planks and uh, a lot of squat holes, a lot of just, you know, so I'm working out with my clients, man. And it's, it's helping a ton. It's helping a ton. And do you um, feel like you're you're getting, you're staying toned? Or are you staying Oh, fit? man. I'm actually uh, in approaching the best shape of the year for me. Um, wow. That's great. Yeah. 
like uh, maybe in the last two years, like the end of 2018, I had just moved. No, so middle of 2018, we moved. No, it was last year we moved. Uh, yeah, the end of 2018, I I stopped working at this uh, gym in in New York. And it was like the fanciest Equinox, you know Equinox. Um, yeah, and, but they have like all the stuff, and it's like there's classes and there's structure and there's all that kind of stuff, and so. Um, I took what I learned there and I just started doing it myself. And then I started doing it with other people. And and so now, man, like whenever I have those days, it was like, I just don't want to do it. I just don't feel like it. You know, I still have somebody that is looking to get a workout in. So yeah, and you yeah. sort of owe them that. And then that pays, that pays you, you know, uh, getting, so I'm in my backyard over here. Uh, and I've, I don't have anything near what you're talking about. In fact, I don't have anything except some cinder blocks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I've got this uh, prison routine, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, but I could use some, I could use some new ideas. I mean, we've been, are we going on, are we eight weeks or nine weeks? What are Who we knows? at? Who I mean, knows? I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea, but no, by the cinder blocks. So actually, uh, so I have a concrete block with a stick in it. And I have this is giant, massive, like concrete something. So it, what it was is a bag of concrete. It got left in the rain. Yeah. So it's the shape of the bag, you know, it's like a pillow. Um, and so like similar to what you're talking about, I would just put some gloves on and just like pick up the rock in different ways, you know, and like the rock yeah. with a stick in it. I'm, I swing it like a mace, you know. But yeah, you got to get creative. You, got you, do. It. you do, and then you realize um, because it's unwieldy, it's not so grippable. Your 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 grips, your hands get actually stronger from having to you know grip things differently to to lift and push and and, and pull and pick up, and your legs uh, and your core because you're bending down and lifting it. You know, you you do find yourself working out, but. Man, there's there's so much online. There's so many workout gurus like yourself that have good things to offer. So I start every morning about 6, 6.30 with 30 to 40 minutes of exercise. That's how I start every day, for sure. Yeah, you were an athlete, too, and you play baseball, right? Yeah, man. So I, I'm, uh, I'm always, you know, I could literally take a bat, a weighted bat, of which I have, and just swing it and get some, you know, some good – trunk hip uh you know core uh activity you know and just the stretch with the back and the you know forearms and, um but to be fair and to be honest i i do miss the gym probably as much as i miss anything yeah, yeah. well i'll tell you one of the things i found and I, you know with me i had back issues and stuff from working for the fire department and everything else but um don't don't dismiss a good stretching session either yeah, uh, yeah. part of my physical therapy was doing like yoga and stretching and everything else. And I'm going to tell you right now, it it made the difference of my back going out about once every two to three months to me going two years now. My back hasn't gone out. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. That's great. That's great. And, you know, uh, I saw Theo the other day. You got yourself. Um, now, maybe I think what it was is that you got. uh it instructed like directed on some grooming your girl didn't come over but she told you how to do it was that it <laughs> yeah i got an instagram live and i was giving myself a haircut like look will you just come on and tell me how to because I, I couldn't deal with it anymore man it's like i got used to like the wind blowing a certain way around my head and it just <laughs> felt like too much you know and so I got, and I used to cut my own hair. Like back in the day when I didn't care as much, I, I used to have a mohawk. So I would just do that, right? Sure. Um, and so like I got, I, I was comfortable enough to try it. And so now I'm just like every couple of weeks, just giving myself a haircut and get some practice in, man. But yeah, I definitely, that. so that's my actual barber. Yeah, see, um, I, don't, I don't have that issue. You're, but, uh, you're <laughs> clean, clean and tight. So I'm growing mine long. But one of the first things that I did because one of the first edicts or one of the, the safety practices was wash your hands, don't touch your face. Mm -hmm. So I realized I'm this guy that's always and with my mustache. I was always raking it. You know, I was grooming that handlebar. And so I shaved everything off. 
just so mm. I could I couldn't do that. And so um, I'm surprised you still got your beard, Theo. I I don't have a face <laughs> that is suited. <laughs> no, I, I've seen you without your beard, and you look like a twelve year old. See, exactly. <laughs> mine like two weeks ago for the same reason of because I always touched it and all that, and I just don't I, like it without it either. I was just wash my hands more, man. I was just wash my hands more. I just <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, you know what I found? I don't touch my face, but I pick my nose more than I ever have. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I assume it was a choice of either picking my nose or sucking my thumb, so I, I took the nose. Um, see, I wasn't having problems until y'all mentioned it. Now everything's freaking itching. <laughs> yeah, right. well, that's the other thing. This thing itches so bad. Like When it's time to trim it, you have to trim it. Yeah, you got to trim that. Yeah. Yeah. Your audience is really appreciating all this male hygiene, I tell you. Um, sure. sure. <laughs> but I think it's um I think it's good that we're we're aware of those things. I think um you know it's the the mask thing is real and mm -hmm. I appreciate everyone that does wear a mask. I respect those who don't for whatever reasons. Yeah. But I, I will say that I I I question, I don't judge, but I do question, huh, not wearing a mask. You're supposed to be wearing a mask, but you're not. But there's a reason for that. And I'm okay, but I just want you to be aware, right? Well, I, I can speak for our, our my, my field. So, I mean, we're lucky enough. We have some of the N95 and N100 masks, which actually help us from, you know, breathing in the part particulates and everything else. You know, as far as the masks go, um, I think a lot of people are, are a little mis- understood as far as, as, as what they're doing. So the masks for the most part that most people are wearing are keeping other people from catching. So it's, it's a, it's a respect thing. So yeah. keeping your germs from getting to other people is not catching, keeping you from catching others. Right. So it, you know, it's one, if, if everybody wore them, then every, it would be a lot safer, but all it does is it takes that one person to, to not wear it, to make it unsafe. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is also the proper, way to wear them i i can't tell you how many times i've gone to the grocery store to to see or, you know they're they're wearing them under their nose or they've got them on their chin or they've got them on their forehead I'm like you 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 completely defeated all purpose you, you might as well not even have it because you completely defeated all purpose of having one on you yeah 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 i'm 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 the same way about hats like if you can't wear a ball hat correctly just don't wear it you know and yeah, so, none, of this, none of this stuff yeah i'm i'm you know i'm i'm a little particular about that um uh so i do understand that if you're physical like you're out jogging mm -hmm. it's not easy to wear a mask and do that i i do get it um or but in, glasses. In, in the same vein i think i think maybe you you'd be served to go find a place for your physical activity that might be less populated. So I live on a reservoir here called Silver Lake mm -hmm. and we've got a lot of people because all of our trails and beaches are shut down around this lake that I live on and people are are running it all the time and not wearing masks. So they're exhaling their particles, particulates as you say, and I can tell that mist is just hanging there and four seconds later, someone's running through it. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, people are going to do what they're going to do. So, but we should, we should be aware. Let's just be aware. Yeah. I think I, like I said, what I said, because I think it's just more of a mutual respect thing. Yeah. yeah. You have to respect all of the people around you. And I kind of attribute it to, you know, I, I haven't smoked in years, but when I used to, I like to consider myself a, a very respectful smoker. You know, I'm not going, I wasn't going to smoke when you know, I said I would smoke for decades, but I'm not going to smoke around a big group of people. I'm not going to do it upwind from people. Like, you know, I, I would actually take the time to look around to try to figure out what the, the wind flow pattern was and how things were before wow. I even lit up the cigarette because you know, uh, I mean, just I don't want my bad habits to inconvenience other people. Mm -hmm. And I kind of look at it the same way with this. Well, if I'm going to be out 
you know, if I'm going to be out without a mask, I am very cognizant of what's going on around me to where I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be running where people can run back through it. Uh, you know, I'm going to make sure I, I maintain a different uh, distance to where I'm not going to have them breathing in anything that I breathe out, that type of thing. So, Theo, how much on this uh, platform do you get Walking Dead questions or Walking Dead anecdotes or experience Walking Dead storytelling? Every now and big, big tiny stories or what? what? Every now and again, every now and again, like, yeah. uh, so that was, that's one thing. Uh, it doesn't come up very much, but there are still great stories, you know, cause like life has happened since then. And so, yeah, uh, it'll be like with a conversation like we were having earlier when you would talk about, you know, something that happened on set or a funny story happened on set. Um, and then just keep it moving, you know, but, uh, Actually, the thing we, we were the the most consistent topic we have right now, besides what to watch and who's doing what is, uh, you know, how it's going to look reopen, how how like if conventions are even going to be a, be a thing anymore, you know, if going out is going to look the same or whatever. But uh, it, it's more like a daydreaming, like, oh, when I when this is over, I'm going to do this. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's 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 also partly my doing, you know. I, I'm 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 having way more success looking to the future than to the past. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. look, the the rebound is is going to be um, a celebration, whatever that yeah. is. Just going back to work, people will be so happy, just yeah. showing up and punching their time clock. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there'll be a renewed ideology about what is um what do i want to put my time into and that convention uh opportunity may not be as interesting as it was um yeah. you know we've come to find out that i'm as interesting as lou temple i don't have to go <laughs> see him um and that's okay. And that's a good thing too. Well, see, and, I was going uh, to say something like that, you know, as far as that goes, like me and Theo, I've been doing the, the live stream stuff. Uh, I started it with, with one of Kevin Smith, uh, one of his, his cohorts, uh, Ming Chen, who's a good friend yeah. of mine. We started yeah. doing that. And then I guess about three weeks ago, uh, we had Theo on and Theo even said, Hey man, I'm loving this. This is, you know, I think we can, we can do something meaningful with it and everything else. But I think over, over the time we've been doing it, especially the live stream stuff is, Let's be honest, you know, both of y'all have been to so many conventions and done so many interviews and everything else, where as far as every Walking Dead question, I can guarantee you there's nobody that can walk on here and ask a question you haven't been asked 10 times before. And I think a lot of the people here now are getting, and like I said, but out of this is coming some positive stuff, or people wanting to get to know you personally, your your life and what you've done yeah. besides Walking Dead. Yeah. And I see that as a big compliment because now they're not so much concerned about your character as they are you as a person. Yeah, that's the truth. And I think there's also not a pressure for having to keep up with the show exactly right, right now. And right. I can take some time to get to know Theo instead of, oh shoot, look at the line for uh, for Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I better right. get in there before <laughs> I get the, you know, you know, yeah. the chance not to. And um, so I, I think yes on on all those counts. You know the the music guys. I have some friends that are musicians that are finding the Facebook Live opportunity to play in their garage. Hey, just let me know what songs you want to hear, and I'll play them. Mm -hmm. um, as being a, a kind of an alternative to the small venue, you know. And um, look, here's the subscription uh, for ten bucks. You can drop in and I'm going to do uh, two hours of covers of the Beatles, you know, and, um, and it's kind of cool. Uh, I think it's, I think it's the margin of diminishing return. I think you can't expect right. to, to maybe unless maybe you can build an audience, I suppose, but it's the new creation. It's the new creative way. Yeah. Um, the other one thing of, I was looking one for. One of the very first things that, that when Theo did with us was uh we brought in a guy who we kind of just, I just discovered off the wall because I was bored one night and looking around. 
Um, the guy, he used to play with Herbie Hancock, of all people. I love and that. He, he does a nightly show called the Quarantine Cocktail Hour love for, like, that. for like an hour and a half. And it's him and his family. He normally plays at a dual, dueling piano bar. And every night's a different theme. So like one night's show tunes, one night's 80s night, one night is uh, uh, like uh, Saturday night. They had Saturday Night Fever. So they did like disco stuff. And, you know, this guy is gaining a whole new popularity that, that he had in his general area, his, his local area over there in Orlando. Now he's, you know, he's, he's like superstar throughout throughout the U.S. and the world. That's awesome. See, that's really good. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what else, Theo, which I think is there's a there's a place for it. Uh, I guess Lonesome Dub's been taken up. But my idea is or was to get back to radio plays. I mean, mm -hmm. I you remember know, you talking about that. We could totally do radio plays. And because I was on Sirius Radio the other day listening mm -hmm. to an old 1940s, um, you know, uh, detective radio play. And those, it was captivating. You know, just the, just the structure and the format kept me engaged. And I think there's a lot to be said for campfire stories and for them to, you know, look, guys, it's, it's called... It's called fishing, not okay. catching, right? Yes. And so we love we, we love the story, the idea, the mystery, and um, and so I think as opposed to independent films, maybe the radio play comes back into the fray because we can actually certainly do that. Well, you know, so I would love to do it. If you if you've ever a chance, if you love a lot of the old radio serials. Long before Twilight Zone and everything else, there was an old show called a radio serial called X Minus One. Oh wow! If you've never listened to it before, they're all they're all you know you can listen to them all day long online, everything else. And it was Twilight Zone long before then, but it was nothing more than a radio serial. Yeah, right, right. And it's yeah. phenomenal. It went on for decades. Those are great. Lone Ranger was a radio serial. Lone Ranger, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. So, so there's some there's some stuff. Well, let's do one. You know, right. let's let's get together and, and put one together because we'll one and and, uh, and get yeah. it out and um, you know it's, it's totally doable and it the you know like you said with the gentleman that that was a piano bar guy um, you do reinvent yourself and recreate and yeah. uh, you know it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, I'll tell you, yeah. I found it interesting. Like I said, when I first saw the the Lonesome Dove stuff, you know. Uh, I don't know if it was on your, I think it was on Theo's page or something. Maybe you tagged him in it. And I went on there and watched it. And like I said, when I first saw it, I fully expected to see the video of Theo reading this stuff. Yeah. And it was almost, it was a pleasant surprise that it wasn't. You, you, you basically mm -hmm. took a, something that's known as a, for a video platform. Yeah. And made it audio. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It was my, yeah. yeah. It was a surprising twist on it. And, but I found myself listening more intently than I did if I would have been watching Leo, uh, Theo reading it. Yeah, I, you know the thing about that. The whole point was I want it to be because because it is the book, and the book is a little bit different than the mini series, mm -hmm. and the book is it, the language is rich and and, and a little bit more uh, nuanced, and uh, just by nature of the economy of, of doing television. But um, so I did want to make it about the book and less about and more about the words being read and less about us seeing Theo struggle with his mic, you know, <laughs> uh, which he, he didn't at all. Um, so I cut yeah, that part out. I think that was really fun. And so I, um, the idea that, you know, you can do that and be engaged, you know, the chapters aren't too long. We're about 20 minutes for long chapters and 10 minutes for short right. ones. There's a little intro music, a little outro music, and a picture that might go with it. And and I try and give uh, you know people that help me out a little props, you know, and, and that they can do something and pitch it. And um, you know, like shoot, anybody. It's fun too to hear other people read it. As a matter. Yeah. You know, it's nice for the variety. Like I said, I'm sure people are about done with hearing me warble. Well, with your uh, permission, I'm going to talk to a friend of mine here who lives about two miles away. Uh, yeah. He, uh, uh, he's, he's an actor himself. He worked on the movie Days of Confused. He's been yeah. on Smith videos. Uh, 
His is name that, is uh, J- Jason London. Yeah, I was going to say, is that Jason? I know he's he's down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah J- Jason's one of my best friends and kind yeah, of like our family. Yeah. Uh, Ask him if he'd read it right up his alley, and I think he would he would have a blast doing this. Yeah, I'd love to have him. I I've got his number somewhere, but uh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind uh, reaching out, um, I'll give him a shout after we're done with this. Because like I said he, I was surprised he he was actually supposed to show up here a little bit later, so he may still. Oh, I don't wow. know. <laughs> oh good, I hope he does. I hope he does. Well, guys, I actually have to ch- uh, check out. I hope that's okay. Uh, no, well, thank you. You've actually sure, stayed right? longer than we intended, and we really appreciate it, man. I'd uh, love to have you on again sometime. This has actually been probably the most interesting and introspective uh, one we've done yet, where we just actually talk about things that really matter. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. that's Theo. Theo brings, uh, Theo brings on, a, a philosopher in me, so I appreciate <laughs> that, Scott. You've been a, a very gracious host as well to allow me to to talk on, talk on. So, um, you love it, man. I love your stories. I always love your stories. I love your perspective. I love, you know, just what you have to offer the world. Well, thank you, brother. And I, I feel the same about you. And we will keep getting it done. And, you know, I just tell everyone to, uh, uh, it's prosperity time. I know your bank accounts are low. I know your, your, your heart is low for, for whatever hasn't been happening, but just know through this adversity is coming prosperity and you have, um, you have sowed adversity. So now it is time to reap, um, prosperity and that is coming to all of us and, uh, and good tidings. And, um, you're going to get double for your trouble. How's that? And it's there going to be go. well, David Lou, you become one of my new favorite people. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right well, 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 Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we will see y'all next time. All right, y'all be good. Take care, man. Thank you.